Hello everyone. Before we start this video, if I could ask you to subscribe to United24 Media on YouTube. They put out some great content and are well worth following. Now, on to today's video and I have some more satellite imagery for you. Hello everyone. I have some interesting satellite images here to look at, which show a Russian 9K720 Iskander launch site in Bryansk, Russia. These were shared by Twitter user Mark Krutov who find some brilliant satellite images, so it's definitely worth a follow if you have a Twitter account. And these images here are definitely worth a look. These images are from around February the 1st and were shared today. So Mark Krutov says that this site was established after January the 28th. Here's an image showing the site from January, so you can see there's nothing there. But he also says that this site was abandoned on February the 7th. So it is a bit out of date, but it does tell us some useful information. So here's the image from February the 1st. So you can see Russia built three earthen mounds around this site. Let's take a closer look at what's here. So most importantly, we have four Iskander launchers in the central mound. Now, I can't see any tracks leading from the Iskanders to here. Yet we do see vehicle tracks from smaller utility vehicles and vehicle tracks surrounding the mounds. So it could be that these were here before the snow fell, or fresh snowfall covered the tracks is most likely. But it does seem that these have been stationary in this location for a little while, for a couple of days possibly. Next to them is an earthen mound with equipment behind it. Then, to the left, another pile of various equipment. Now the fact that Russia built earthen mounds despite this being in Russian territory, tells us that they were concerned about a possible attack but they, quite foolishly, put each Iskander behind the same mound, which beats the purpose. If these were hit, it's possible we could have seen all of these Iskanders lost with just one strike. Here I've zoomed in on the Iskanders so you can see them a little bit better. You can also see a couple of utility trucks nearby. I wonder if these trucks are to drive the crew to the Iskanders. Again, we can see tracks around the earthen mound, these are possibly from excavators and loaders which created it. Who knows, none of them seem to be coming from the Iskanders themselves. But it is possible that the tracks just aren't visible on this image. Maybe lost during the Iskander missile's launch. Now I want to have a look at the track marks. Numbers 1 and 2 lead into the wooded area. Number 3 leads off screen. And number 4 leads to a pile of supplies. So number 4 is likely from a utility truck which drops stuff off here. Track number 3 appears to be from the small utility vehicles which you can see near the Iskanders. Tracks 1 and 2 appear to go around the earth and mounds. I do wonder if these are actually from the Iskanders themselves, showing the route which they took here, and we just can't see the tracks leading directly behind them for whatever reason. Track number 3 we can see goes off screen. And it would be interesting, if more imagery was available, to follow it and see where they come from. Final image, this one is from February the 7th. The site is abandoned. There has been fresh snow unfortunately, so the tracks aren't available. If they were, it may give us an idea as to which direction these Iskanders headed and where they were possibly based. So this tells us that Russia uses these sites for a small amount of time only, little over a week. Here's their location on Google Maps. So it's in a clearing in some woods near a small town called Alanovka. This, as you can see here, is over 60 kilometers to the border. And missiles from this site were heading likely towards Kyiv. Missiles from this site were likely heading towards Kyiv because the launchers are orientated towards the southwest in the direction of Kyiv. Let's take a look at the second Iskander site now. So here it is. This one is very close to the first, by the way. This image is from January the 28th and shows an earthen berm under construction. And here we have another image, this one from February the 8th, showing burnt, damaged and trampled terrain. If you look closely, you can see some four markings in the snow where Iskander launchers were. Now they aren't here now, so the site had been abandoned before this image was taken but it does show that four Iskander missile launchers were positioned here at some point. Here, we can see the tracks quite clearly. So again, these Iskander launchers are aimed towards the southwest, the most likely target again being Kyiv, or at least targets in and around the Kyiv area. 
The tracks lead onto a road heading southeast. Now, I was hoping this road would lead to a nearby obvious military base, but unfortunately, the road does branch off into different directions a little bit further down, so it is impossible to say for sure where these were heading from. There are a lot of military camps and military sites in this region, so these Iskanders could be coming from any of those. Here's a map showing the sites in relation to each other, so you can see that they are very very close. So this tells us a bit about Russia's operations. It seems that they select these sites and then quickly build a temporary firing position, protected by an earthen berm. These sites are used for only a couple of days, maybe a week maximum. I think the lack of tracks behind the Iskanders in the first image show that possibly they did spend a couple of days here. Before then, the site is abandoned before it can be tracked and targeted. It's possible that this site is abandoned immediately after the first firing mission is complete. The Iskanders may be just parking here for a couple of days to wait for the go-ahead, launch the rockets and then leave. Such tactics will make it difficult for Ukraine to target these Iskander launch sites. While they are within range of um, platforms such as the 2143 drone and the 2141 and even the TOCHQ, it would be very difficult to find the launch site and target it while the Iskanders are there before they scoot away again. It does make sense for Russia to keep these on the move to different locations for safety reasons to avoid that happening. If these were static sites, it would be fairly easy to track where the Iskanders were launched from and send a TOCHQ or a 2141 drone to pay them a visit. It is possible that these sites could be tracked if satellite imagery is found showing them currently under construction. For the second site, we did see a satellite image which I put on screen showing an earthen berm under construction, which in the middle of nowhere, it looked a bit odd. It kind of stood out a bit. So maybe if Ukraine can get a hold of satellite images of this area where the Iskanders are launched from, Notice odd peculiarities like that, odd formations, odd trenches being dug in the middle of nowhere. It could be a sign that there's going to be a future Iskander launch site from that location. And perhaps we could keep an eye on it, either with constant satellite images or drones, that sort of thing. And maybe, just maybe, we may be able to find a way to hit the Iskanders when they arrive at the site before they carry out the firing mission. It would be very difficult, but... As seen, the satellite images do detect these trenches while they are being dug, and the trenches being dug in the middle of nowhere like that do stand out a bit. So it is a possibility. Now, the Iskander missile has a max range of around 500 kilometers. So before we finish, here I've added a radius circle to the map to show where these Iskanders could hit from the launch positions. So given their orientation, these are aimed towards Kyiv. And as you can see, Kyiv is well within range of these Iskanders. Russia has 160 Iskander launchers in service. So far, not a single one has been lost. So being able to hit an Iskander would be a pretty good scalp for Ukraine. Russia has lost quite a few rocket and missile systems though. As seen on Oryx, 103 BM-21 Grads, 3 9P-138 Grads, 48 BM-27 Eurogans, 1 BM-30 Smirch, and 13 2B-17 Tornado Gs have been lost, not to mention 1 S-400 and 2 S-300 launchers. With its 500km range, however, the Iskander is pretty safe. The Iskander can be fired well out of range of any of Ukraine's platforms. Which is surprising that these are as close to the front line as they are. It's quite risky when these could easily be fired from further back in a pretty safe area and still hit Kyiv. Maybe the decision has been made to fire them a bit closer in order to cut flight time and so minimise the risk of these being spotted, tracked and intercepted and that sort of thing. This chart here is a little bit outdated coming from November the 18th. But it's Ukraine's intelligence estimates of Russia's precision missile arsenal. So you can see the Iskander at the top. They had 900 and have used 829, with 119 remaining. But we've also produced 48. So the Iskanders are in production, but at a pretty low number. 
Now, of course, this is from November the 18th, 2022, so it is outdated and things may have changed since then. Of course, more risk can the missiles being used and also production of them may have been ramped up. But I thought it worth a quick look at before we finish the video. So that's the end of the video. If you found it interesting, please click like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching and take care, everybody.